just getting sorted. All right, so there we go. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. So what's up, everybody? And Facebook, what's up, everybody? YouTube. So again, we're continuing our daily installations of me solving SAT problems from Khan Academy. And we're continuing with where we left off yesterday. We didn't complete the full section. We were still working on the linear inequality word problems. These were pretty tough. These were pretty convoluted. So we're just going to keep rolling with these and start with, I got two left. Now, again, we're a little bit pressed for time, so I'm probably only going to be able to knock out these two, and then we'll continue on with the next section tomorrow. Uh, so let's get it going. We're going to go straight into number four and five. And I've got it all set up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy like this and just bring him over to the whiteboard. Oh, and I got to, uh, you know, and I got to share my screen, of course. This one is down here. Let me just load this up. And again, if you're listening or watching on Facebook, you, of course, can't see the whiteboard. I can't share it there. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to my YouTube channel where you can see the live stream, and that's where you'll be able to see the share screen. Let me get back on here. Let's do our share screen share. All right, back in business. All right. A technology store sells tablets and computers. In January, they sell over 300 items, and more of those sales are tablets than computers. In February, they sell exactly 100 tablets and 20 computers. The graph at the left shows two equations related to this problem, where T is the total tablet sales. We got that on, the, on the, our x-axis in this case, almost like a T-axis. <clears throat> and C is the total computer sales on this axis. So which of the following combinations could be the technology store's total sales? And so we got this graph coming down here, this graph coming down here. Nothing's labeled. Um, I don't even find this graph super, super helpful. Let's, 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 let's analyze the numbers and see what we can come up with here. In January, they sell over 300 items. So we know we're over 300 in January. And more of these are tablets. So wait a minute. So it says more of these sales are tablets than computers. So that means that in January, <clears throat> um, they sell at least 151. Let's try it. <clears throat> Let's try it like this. Tablets, computers, make a little thing here. In January, at least 151. Okay. And then I think in February, we've got... I'm sorry, yeah, did I say that right? right. 151. In February, uh, we've got exactly 100 tablets. And here we've got 20 computers. <clears throat> and they sell less than 150. Let's say less than 149. So we can see kind of at least some, <clears throat> some good boundaries. Computers can't exceed basically 170. It has to be less than 170. Uh, and it, look at this. <clears throat> we can kind of start to eliminate uh, based on what's down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, my, uh, my thing is really, is really crazy. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We don't know that computers is less than 149 because, <clears throat> because they, they sell over 300. So that means they could have sold 400. Computers could still be... Um, could still be like 199, so this is actually incorrect. That one we don't know, but this we do know because it's over 300 items, and it is more so at least 150. Uh, computers is, is not as sure, but tablets we have to sell greater than 251. And we can already start to eliminate A. Actually, we can eliminate everything. It has to be B because all of these guys, the tablet number is too small. So as long as I'm understanding this problem correctly, which I believe I, I think I got those two limitations. I didn't even need the graph. Uh, and this graph looks like a system of equations. I assume one, they both model these different inequalities. But see, it's not clear. It's This is like not a, a properly, in my opinion, not a very clearly labeled graph. They did this obviously intentionally. But I'm not even going to use it because... I don't need to. Uh, they they made these numbers nice enough where I can use elimination in this case and say it has to be, it has to be B. So let's go ahead. Oops, let's go ahead and answer. Here we go. Let's maximize this. What did I say it was? 
I said it was B, right? Let's go with this and see if that works. Okay, and let's just read the explanation just for fun. Uh, I want to see how they've looked at this graph with, uh, yeah, with this. So they're saying this nice thing here. So they said T minus, so they're saying if the total tablet sales then is T minus 100 is the total tablet sales at the storefront. And C is the total computer sales. Uh, and C is 120. Oh, I get it. So they're they're doing they're they're limiting it to because T minus 100 would reduce that February amount. It, it's just uh, uh, locating it for January, and this is just locating it for <clears throat> for January as well, taking off that 20. So that over 300, which was from January, they've got this little inequality, and this is where I think this is uh, C is greater than or greater than 420 minus t that's this this line so that's where they're getting this inequality and since c is the cost man see this is so much more complicated you could do it like this but it would be all the shaded up here right above this line and then they get our second inequality uh from this guy and this is basically now they're just comparing february <clears throat> it looks like, or no, I'm sorry. They're comparing these guys to each other now. It's a different inequality. They're just saying, hey, this one has to be more than this one. Man, I mean, this, again, so now that's how they get the second equation. And this, and then when they isolate and they solve for C, now they're saying it's less than this line. So if we shaded it in, it'd be everything above here, everything less than here. So it has to be in this region. And apparently B is the only one that falls properly into this region where it meets those restrictions. So, hey, if that graph, I mean, that just seems like a much longer way to do it. If that works for you, hey, it, it, it's great, but you know, that's not how I would have solved it. These are tough. These are not easy problems. And and it's it's like these were problems. Man, of course, the math, uh, if I can break it down properly, no problem. But <clears throat> if you guys watched yesterday, even number two or something or number three, I didn't analyze the, the wording correctly, and it, it got tough. So these can be definitely tough. All right, well, this is, I think, going to be our last one because I am running late on time or slow, low on time. <clears throat> Elena is designing a paint can with thickness T millimeters and height centimeters. Let's just do our little paint can. I always like to make a drawing. Oops, that's my paint can. With is a design so thickness is going to be the T. Uh, you know, if it's going to be thickness, it's going to be hard to sort of show. So I'll say T because I, I assume it's like the thickness of the metal. Uh, H is definitely going to be just the height like this. In order to withstand pressure. Uh, oh no, sorry. She calculates that the thickness of the can in millimeters, thickness of the can in millimeters must be at least I'll say greater than or equal to, at least 0.1 times the height of the can centimeters okay uh, there's our first inequality and due to the cost constraints the cost of material used 0.2 plus T plus 0.5 H cents okay they give us this thing 0.2 plus T plus 0.5 H must be at most meaning less than or equal to uh, they see they didn't give us any ones where it's just greater than or less than because that would have been easy to eliminate, but they didn't do they didn't do us that favor. That's okay. Must be at most twelve point two cents. <coughs> so we got this cough, really annoying. Which of the following systems of inequalities best models the relationship between height and thickness described above? I mean, we've got our inequalities, right? But what have they done? They they've gotten rid of all these crazy decimals for whatever reason. So we've got to basically do the same thing. And I can say that, first of all, converting this equation is really easy because all they did was they got rid of this decimal, which means they multiplied. All of these have uh, either well, H or 10H. But look, you, don't even worry about that. All you got to do is look, be like, hey, wait, we got a point 0.1 here. These guys have no de uh, decimals. How do I get rid of that? Well. I just multiply both sides by 10. Let's bring it down here. Because then this becomes 10t is greater than or equal to. And 10 times 0.1, why did I choose 10? Because 0.1 times 10 is just h, or I mean 1. 
Now we got our nice inequality. H is less than or equal to 10T. And look, that's exactly what's in A and exactly what's in C, but not what's in D or B right off the bat. Uh, those guys go away. Now we just got to figure out which one of these is good to go for for the other equation. It look the main thing I see is they've turned that constant. Wait, did I put this down right? I did. Yeah. All right. So they've turned that constant into twelve. Um, so you know what? Actually, this is going to work out nicely. De look, these are just things that I recognize after with practice. I'm saying that I see this point two over here. And I see this 12.2 over here. And these all answers have 12. That's our constant. So first, I'm just going to start by subtracting 0.2 from both sides. And we'll deal with the rest later. This becomes, we got. I'm going to go up here. Okay. Now we've got T plus 0.5H is less than or equal to 12. Now we're looking pretty good because now we got a 12. Uh, the other thing is they've isolated T. So let's isolate T just to match it up. Technically, this equation is the same as one of these two, but we just don't see it yet because it's not in the same format. So let's isolate. Subtract 0.5H from both sides. I'm just moving stuff around. That goes away. And then we got T is less than or equal to, what do they have first? The constant. 12 minus 0.5H, and there we go. This is basically it. I can already, you can probably already tell which one is the answer because T is less than or equal to, not greater than or equal to. But look, it, it's the same. 12 minus H over 2. The only thing they've done is the only reason why they've made this a more difficult problem is they, they again, get rid of that decimal. You just got to be able to recognize that 0.5 is the same as 1 half. Right? And then they added one more curveball just in case this confuses you. Right? You, but 1 half H is the same as H over 2. Because all you're doing is you're just multiplying these two numerators and you get h over 2 12 t is less than or equal to this and that means a is our answer so i hope i hope that made sense let's just double check and make sure we're right with this one a is what we chose and is right and that's it they got those same inequalities and they simplified and yeah that's all that is to it so sorry, we could only. I kind of had to spread out one section over two days. Let me go back to my to my screen share here, or turn the screen share off on YouTube. But yeah, it's basically one of these things where. Oh, hold on one second. I think I went back. All right, there we go. So it's basically one of these things where they're just trying to make it a little bit more complex, understanding you in testing your understanding of the relationship between fractions and decimals and so on and so forth. But if you can nail that and you can kind of parse it accordingly, it's not so bad. All right, cool guys. I hope that was helpful and have a great morning. Have a great day. Uh, we'll do some other videos this weekend, but it won't be, I don't know if we'll, we'll stick with the SAT or we'll do some other stuff. And big announcement, I've got a, I've got a really cool video that's going to be coming out in uh, oh, hey, what's up, Biba Moosley, Mousley. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, but anyways, all right, so check this out. We're going to have a video. Uh, this is what I'm shooting for. It's an aggressive schedule. And I haven't even written the song yet. If I can make it happen, it'll be out on National Pie Day, which is coming up on March 14th. So I'm writing the song right now. It's going to be sort of like a history of pie and uses of it and all this cool stuff. But my voice is still not 100%, so it's really frustrating trying to record it. But hopefully this will happen. We'll have a sweet new music video for you out in less than two weeks, which is the fastest turnaround time I've ever had to deal with. We'll see if I can make it happen. Fingers crossed. You guys can look forward to that. Thank you guys so much, and uh, take it easy.